Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be going through a blue screen example known as the IRQL no less than or equal, uh, which is basically a blue screen that is caused by this driver. Now many of you have messaged me about this blue screen and you tell me, well I've got this error, what do I do now? Well in this video I'm going to show you what you can do and how you can find the cause of the blue screen. Now before we start I'm just going to quickly show you what we are going to do. We're just going to basically follow three simple steps. First step is going to be to identify the blue screen. Now there are two types of blue screens, so you need to know which one you get. So if you don't have a mini dump folder in, in your C drive under Windows, then don't worry. You'll, under, you, you'll understand in a minute. Uh, step two is going to be to understand the driver or the file that's causing the blue screen. When I say understand, I don't mean in-depth knowledge of what it does. You just basically need to know uh, whereabout it works on your PC, and then we can you know, move on. Step three is going to be to test where we think the problem uh, might be. Now step one is to identify the blue screen. Now here I have two examples of blue screens and I'll tell you the difference. Basically the one on to the left is a blue screen that occurs and all the information that you'll actually need are provided on the actual blue screen. As you can see here, the problem seems to be caused by the following file. So it gives you the file name that seems to be causing the uh, blue screen. And in this case, a mini dump folder will not be created and you will not be able to see or view uh, your blue screen files because, because they will not be there. While the one on to the right is a blue screen error that occurs and it just gives you the uh, blue screen name but it doesn't actually give you uh, much uh, other helpful information such as the file or the drive that seems to be causing the blue screen. At the bottom here uh, it tells you it's, it's collecting the data and it's going to store it on your disk, uh, on your C drive, under Windows and the mini dump folder and you can view these uh, using software which uh, uh, which I'm going to be using uh, blue called blue screen view now I've already got an example open this is a, a blue screen example that uh, one of you guys sent me and uh, the column that you want to look at is uh, the cause by driver column this is the important column and you want to look up uh, look uh, for the file that's causing the problem at uh, the blue screen and here as you can see uh, I have uh, one that's different and then the rest are all the same. Basically, um, if you have uh, different files and you can't make up your mind, basically look at the one that occurs the most and just deal with that one first and then you can go on to the next one, so on and so forth. Now that we know the problem is uh, the ntoskrnl.exe, what we are going to do is uh, basically go on to step two, which is to uh, understand this file and uh, uh, basically get a good idea of what it does on your PC and what's, what its responsibilities are. Uh, you can search up on the internet, uh, there are loads of websites, but if you want you can just use a Wikipedia. Uh, here I've searched the file up and basically you don't need an in-depth knowledge of what the file does or, or how it works. You just basically need to get a good overview of what it does on your PC and where it might be what uh, uh, what its responsibilities are, etc. Whatever. Basically, here if you look, uh, it says um, this file is basically is responsible for various system services such as hardware virtualization and uh, processing your, um, and managing your memory. Now, this is basically all we need to know. Uh, w once you know this, you basically um, um, sh should understand that. Uh, is um, responsible for managing your memory in one way or another. We don't need to know how it manages the memory, but all we do need to know is it does manage the memory and is it works with the memory in one way or another. Basically, uh, if you think about it, the main two types of memory on your PC are going to be your hard drive and your RAM. Now, um, so what we are going to do next is go on to step three, which is going to be uh, testing the um, RAM and the hard drive for errors and see if you can pick up any errors or not. Now that we have identified the blue screen, uh, we understood what it does and now we're going to move on to step 3 which is going to be uh, running a simple test on the hard drive and the RAM. Now for the hard drive what we're going to do is uh, 
first find out the manufacturer of the hard drive and then go to the website and download a diagnostic tool and then run a test on the hard drive while for the RAM we're just going to use a simple uh, uh, well-known software uh, called MemTest well let's start off with the hard drive first uh, to find your hard drives make uh, I would recommend using this software called uh, uh, system information for Windows software or SIW uh, just open this and uh, it gives you quite a lot of information about your um, components now if you go down here and go to storage devices and here's the um, hard drive and as you can see the manufacturer is the uh, is a Western Digital now you can go to their website and uh, I've already got their website open here you can go to their website and find the diagnostic tool um, if you can't find it I've already got a um, link in the description uh, for Western Digital but for other makes uh, you'll just have to navigate and find it yourself I'll provide the, uh, the link in the description for this now I've already downloaded a software called uh, or a diagnostic tool from uh, Western Digital called uh, uh, Data Lifeguard Diagnostic it's for Western Digital and it's right here now let's open this and run a simple test now I've got two hard drives um, connected uh, all on my PC at the moment the first one is obviously the local internal hard drive 500 gig and th this one is a external hard drive um, which I've also connected up it's a one terabyte hard drive and basically when you open up it runs tests on your hard drives and you can right click on the hard drive and show smart disk information and it will display the tests it carried out and so on and so forth <clears throat> now if you have um, a lot of errors on your hard drive uh, then I'd recommend uh, getting a new hard drive but if you have something like a few bad sectors uh, I would recommend uh, reinstalling Windows as what this does is basically when you reinstall Windows uh, Windows will uh, try and avoid all the bad sectors and just sit on the hard drive that's you know fine and there's nothing wrong with it basically you know it'll work for some time but hard drives do tend to degrade over time so yeah now for the um, testing of the RAM we're going to be using a software called MemTest MemTest is pretty well known and you can just download it here click download and then click here to download I'll just download it in a zip folder uh, I've already downloaded it obviously I'm not going to download it again it's right here and once you open it it looks something like this uh, now once you open this um, um, by default it'll, it'll have uh, all unused RAM basically it means that when you uh, click start testing it'll um, run a test on all the RAM that's not been used and also you can type in a, a number here in a megabyte to see how much RAM you wanna run tests on um, I would start the test and leave it on for a good few hours this, is ten, this does tend to take quite a long time uh, but yeah once you do find errors uh, I would recommend that what you do is open up your PC and keep removing one of each of the uh, RAM sticks to see where the fault is so you can find the fault that way so it's the easiest way uh, but if you don't find any errors that's good I guess uh, but if you do um, find errors that you cannot fix then replacing it is the best option I hope this video has helped and um, uh, if your problem has not been resolved by um, doing what I showed you in the video then it's very likely something completely different but in most cases this does work I have gotten a lot of blue screens from you guys and most of them have been resolved similar to the one I just showed you right now um, any other way I can help please let me know and also please check out the videos before you ask me uh, questions about blue screens thank you very much bye bye